try to make the words we've heard. And I trust and hope that by some way, however possible, I will be able to add to. Amen. That's what we want to do. We want to add to the kingdom. We want to add to our knowledge. We want to add to our faith. Build it up. So if you would turn with me to Psalms chapter 105. This being the season, this being the time, I believe it's prevalent to go ahead and talk a little bit on this. And man, that's all right. I to try not to bore you. I will try to stay on task and let's get this going. Psalms 105, verse number one says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. O give thanks unto the Lord. So here we are a few days before a national holiday called Thanksgiving. It is a time when we come together, families meet, Grocery stores are busy. Work is closed up for the day for the most part. And we spend our afternoon and time giving thanks back to each other. Thankful for what God has done for us for this year. Thankful for the blessings he's bestowed on us for our family, for our friends. The ability to have the job that we have. The ability to have the relationships that we have. The ability to, to just be there that day. We give thanks. And it's an awesome time to be able to do so. It's probably one of my favorite holidays. I like turkey. I like ham. I like mashed potatoes. And I like the spread of all the other pies. Of course, I like fruit salad. Got to have fruit salad. But it's not about eating. It's not about getting that tryptophan in our body and all of a sudden we go into a light coma. <laughs> it's not about turning on a football game to see who's going head to head. It's about giving thanks back to God. It's about honoring one another and giving thanks back to one another so i want to talk a little bit today about being thankful there was this woman that put these seven top things to be thankful for and she had it on her refrigerator and she quoted it apparently every morning and it obviously was written by a woman but these were the seven top things that she was thankful for for automatic dishwashers, they make it possible to get out of the kitchen before the family comes in for their after dinner snack. For husbands who attack small repair jobs around the house, they usually make them big enough to call in the professionals. For the bathtub, it's the one place the family allows mom some time to herself. Not around our house. <laughs> you lock the door and you still see the little fingers underneath. <laughs> Number four, things to be thankful for. For children who put away their things and clean up after themselves. They're such a joy, you hate to see them go home to their own parents. <laughs> Let's get that one. <laughs> For gardening, it's a relief to deal with dirt outside the house for a change. 
for teenagers. They give parents an opportunity to learn a second language. And finally, number seven, for smoke alarms. They let you know when the dinner's done. <laughs> These are some things to be thankful for. And I want to admonish us today and to tell us that we do have a reason to be thankful. Amen. I spent all yesterday morning into the afternoon over at my cousin's house. And uh, it was a sad day. Um, my father's only sister passed away and went on to eternity at my cousin's house. She lived with my cousin and uh, her husband for the past year, year and a half, something like that. She had been in poor health for quite some time. Quite some time she had been in poor health. So when I got the call yesterday, I can't say I was totally shocked, but still you, you're surprised. You know, you, you know what's coming, but yet when it comes, you, you're not prepared for it totally. So when I wanted to be a strength to the family, wanted to be there to show support, and there to show concern, and, and there to offer up any prayer for the family or offer up any you know support for the family because they're not uh, a very religious family um, by nature. But we had an opportunity to reflect. And we had an opportunity. It's, it's amazing how when one passes away, it's almost like when you breathe your last breath, you're almost all of a sudden your sainthood material. Um, and I'm not knocking my Aunt Sharon at all because she was a wonderful woman. But it, it, there's something about death that for a lot of people, it just melts away all the bad qualities and cements all the good qualities. And isn't that something true with our life today? That it's a sad day when we, when we come in and we have ought against our brother. We have ought against our sister. When we could be loving and thanking each other for the gifts that they bring to this house. And so it might not be that, that I'm thankful enough to tell you how much I appreciate everyone that's in this church today. Might be that I'm not thankful enough to let my children know how much I love and appreciate them. Even when they get on my nerves. Even when they're oh, right there. Even when they get right there. And trust me, they get right there often. I think that's what happened to my hair. They got there so much, they just, just disappeared. My brother, he's got kids too, so you guys wait. You guys just wait. You got the young kids, just wait. <laughs> he broke in his head. <laughs> but, but through it all, and through all the turmoil, through all the stress, and through all the, the unanswers, you know, they're just sometimes your kids come to you and you don't have the answer. You know, they, they're genuinely seeking, Dad, what about this? I had a question last night, and, and if you bear with me, uh, question last night, my son asked me, he said, Dad, I was happy, yet I was angry. He said, there was a, there was a prayer that he felt God answered. He knows God answered. And he said, how could God answer that prayer and not answer this prayer? Lord saw fit to take his birth mom. How could he answer this prayer and not that prayer? What do you say to that? I don't have any answers for that. All I said is we have to be thankful. I said, you know what? She went at 32 years old, but you know what? She went and saved. That's right. And I said, had she lived longer, there may have been things in her life, things that she found out or things that she knew or experiences in her life that maybe might have caused her to get off track. And so the Lord took her when she was saved. Now, that's tough on me. Yes, that's tough on the kids. But let me tell you, that's what life is all about. We have to make sure that we make heaven our home. So even though she went at a young age, she went to save. And I have an opportunity now to live my life in a way so that we can, we can meet again one day. 
And my kids have an opportunity that if they live, I can baptize in Jesus' name. You get filled with the Holy Ghost. If they live an overcoming life, that they can, again, meet her one day. Because she's already made it. And we have an opportunity to make it. But we have to not be bitter. Let the things of this world get us bound up or get us tied up or get us angry or get us sidetracked. We have to remain thankful. Sometimes that's a hard task. Sometimes it's a challenging task. Sometimes it takes everything within you just to remain thankful. That's one thing that really I could say about my Aunt Sharon is she always seemed to have a good word to say. No matter what situation she was in, she seemed to have a good word to say. It's something that you're taught. We are not, by nature, naturally thankful. Even as a child, we have to train our child to say please and to say thank you. It's not something that if you don't teach them that, they're going to naturally just pick up and start doing. You have to teach your children at a young age to be thankful, to say thanks, to say please, to say yes ma'am, to say no ma'am, say yes sir, no sir. It's not something that is in us that we're just going to start doing on our own. So we have to start teaching at a young age. And once they get the basis of being thankful, then they can begin to, it's like building blocks, like what Pastor was teaching last week, these building blocks. Once you get that foundation down, once you start learning how to be thankful, once you start learning this issue of thankfulness, then it can begin to build and grow and blossom into greater and bigger and better things. You know, if there's ever been some people that you just love and enjoy being around, just because of their personality, it's kind of infectious, it's kind of, they're a joy to be around. You just want to, you know, if, if you have an opportunity to have them over, that would be a pleasure to have them over. You want to spend time with them, you want to be with them, because they're so fun, they're just fun to be around. There's just something that's in them that's nurtured and they've learned how to have that way about them. And they're fun and it's, it's just a pleasure. And you get the other people. Oh boy, are they coming over? <laughs> that's what I think most people say when they think about me. You know, is he coming over? Not him. He always looks so serious. He always looks so angry. He always looks so mean. What's wrong with him? Trust me, I'm working on it. I gotta try and deprogram myself. It's been 39 years I've been this way. I'm trying to work on being more friendly. I'm trying to work on being more outgoing. I'm trying to work on being more <coughs> thankful. We've got to be thankful. Amen. In every situation we're in. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12 says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. Do I know you? Do you know me? Know them that labor among you. And are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Know them. And to esteem them very highly in love for their works' sake. And be at peace among yourself. That is some strong words right there. Be at peace among yourselves. There's some people that never seem to be at peace because they always got off against you. They always got off against me. They're always stirring up something and they're never at peace. And let me tell you, if you're never at peace with yourself, you cannot be thankful. It's impossible to be thankful if you're not at peace with yourself. Right. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. How can I be thankful in everything? Something we need to teach ourselves. Because in and of ourselves, when we look at it, and 
And we perceive whatever situation we're in, we have reactions to it. And it's not always a grateful or peaceful or thankful spirit. How can I be thankful that I just lost my job? How can I be thankful that I just lost my spouse? How can I be thankful that everything seems to be going wrong? How can I be thankful that my husband left me? How can I be thankful that my wife just won't go to church? How can I be thankful that there's no food in my refrigerator? How can I be thankful? And we can let the list go on and go on and go on. Something we need to teach ourselves is how to be thankful with where we're at. Just like the child, I have a three-year-old, Addison. And my father came over about a week or so ago. And we're outside. My wife, I was at work. My wife and my father and Addison were outside. And Wesley's at the patio door. He didn't scream because he wanted to go outside. But it was cold that day. It was cold. And we got a trampoline for the children this summer for their birthday. My, my parents got all, all the kids a trampoline like a one big happy gift for all of them to share. And so now it's November and it's time to tear down the trampoline so it doesn't get snowed on. And, you know, we don't want the weather and the elements to ruin it. We want to be able to keep that gift for next year, put it back out. So my father and my wife and Addison were outside taking the trampoline apart to store it away for the winter. And it was cold out there. They had coats on and stuff. My dad made mention of, man, it sure is chilly out. And Addison, my three-year-old, looked up and said, at least it's not raining. <laughs> at least it's not raining. In other words, could be worse. In other words, let's be thankful with what we got right now. And that's something that even at three years old, there's something being instilled and something being taught that no matter what situation we're in, we have an opportunity and we have, a, we have an obligation to look at it for the negative or for the positive. Let's train each other, let's train our children, let's train ourselves to try and seek out a positive. Let's be thankful. Be content. Be thankful. There was a certain preacher that was known for his uplifting prayers. And he always found something to be grateful for in his prayers. But one Sunday morning, the weather was so cold, dark, and gloomy that one of the church members thought to himself, I'll bet the preacher won't be able to think of anything for which to be thankful for about today. But to his surprise, the preacher began by praying, Gracious God, we thank you that the weather is not always like this. When we understand that the God we serve is a true and just and merciful Savior, then we truly can be thankful. Because what I deserve I did not get. And I'm thankful. Because where I could be, I am not. And I am thankful. Because where my children could be at today, they are not. They're here in a loving environment. And they're here and they're fed and they're warm and they're loved by their mom and their dad. They're loved by their aunts and their uncles. They're loved by their grandmas and their grandpas. I'm thankful. We need to be thankful. Amen. Sometimes it takes specific holidays and times of worship to remind us of the fact that we need to be thankful. Sometimes it seems like we don't have any trouble coming up with the list of needs and desires, but it's usually harder for us to come up with a list of things for which we are grateful. I had my children, well actually my wife had my children sit down last night at the table and write out a list, name the top seven things that, that you want for Christmas. Just seven items. Listen, 
top seven things. Of course, my son son did it. He's doing astronomical gifts. That like, what are you thinking? Like, who, who do you think I work for? What money do you think I have? <laughs> no, let's be realistic and put things on there that maybe you might actually get. Mustang GT? I don't think so. Not unless you're a little diecast. <laughs> But when it comes down to it, even my children writing these little, this list of things, they want or need for nothing. I am so blessed. So blessed to have a family that loves me. So blessed to have a wife that loves me, loves my children, loves my family, as kooky as we are sometimes. Loves my family. I'm blessed and I'm thankful. We need to have a thankful heart. We make a mistake when we equate being thankful and thanksgiving with giving thanks for an abundance of food, possessions, or even those less concrete things. Concrete things such as health, friendship, peace, and security. There's nothing wrong with giving thanks for, for those things. But it goes a lot deeper than just the stuff and the things of life. Right. Things are going good, it's hard to remember the call of God. And when we forget, things fall apart. Then we want to blame God and get mad at God. And we holler, why are you doing this? How many have ever been guilty of that? You think in your situation that God is actually, you know, he's, he's come on the scene and he's just messing things up and mixing things up and putting this and pulling that and it's like, ha ah, I'll show you. That's not God's attitude towards us. That is not God's attitude toward you and I. Be thankful. Sometimes it's only in despair or failure or uncertainty that we're open to hearing a call back to faithfulness and to thankful living. For some, it's only when they're down that they can look up for help. God wants a heartfelt, ongoing relationship that isn't dependent upon the stuff of life. We are not in some codependent relationship where God has to prove God's love for us by continuing to pour on us gifts of things of life. God has already given us the greatest and most costly gift possible. The life that we're living right now. Be thankful. God desires a thankful heart. One that is striving first for the kingdom of God. And God's righteousness. In everything. Give thanks. I read a, I read a story about Corey Ten Boom. World War II in the prison camps and her and her sister, I think her sister name was either Betsy or Becky, Corey Tim Boom and, and, and I think it was Betsy, they were moved from one prison camp to another prison camp and this prison camp that they went to was the most feared prison camp in all of Germany. It was just a, a, a filthy, filthy place of a prison camp. It was overcrowded. They had many, many Jews, many, many prisoners, hostages here in this prison camp. It was overrun. It was, it was just too many people for the facility to physically maintain or hold, but that didn't matter to the Germans at the time. They were gathering him in by the tens of thousands. They were coming into this prison camp. Corey Tim Boo had the opportunity to read a Bible and to read about Thanksgiving, about this verse here in First Thessalonians. In everything, give thanks. And her sister brought it out that we have to give thanks. She said, I don't want to give thanks. Here we are, we're, we're in this infested place. It was infested with fleas. Fleas were all over the place, on the people, on the bedding, in the food. Fleas were everywhere, and they were abundant. How can you be thankful? in this. This is filth. This is, this is chaos. 
how can I be thankful with where I'm at right now? But she read the scripture in everything, give thanks. And she said, I don't understand it, but I'm going to do it. And Corey Ten Boom had the opportunity to witness to many of those prisoners that were there with her. And they were able to hold Bible studies. And they were actually able to talk to people about the love of Christ because they realized the soldiers were not coming in and checking on them off. Finally came to light why they had so much freedom in this prison camp. Why they had so much liberty to talk about God's goodness and God's mercy and be thankful. And they were able to win others to Christ in their little camp. You know why it was? Because the guards didn't come break it up. Because the guards wouldn't step foot inside because the fleas. So the thing that is really nagging you. Right. The thing that has just eaten you away. And it may be a little thing. Oh, flea isn't very big. Huh? Flea is pretty small. But if you ever had one on you, those suckers are hard to kill too. And they're nagging at you. Whatever it is in life that's nagging at you, whatever it is in life that's Picking at you and making you itch and making you uncomfortable. If we can turn and start to give thanks. The adversary is after your and I soul. And he's using these little things to try and crop up and nag at us. But if we can give thanks in the bad times. If we can give thanks in the hard times. We can give thanks even when it looks like these things that are nagging us. Maybe the things that are nagging us is actually going to provide a great revival and a great outpouring for us if we give thanks. Amen. We need to have a thankful heart. Yes, sir. Quench not the Spirit. That's after that verse. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Verse 19, quench not the Spirit. Despise not proud signs. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Turn with me. Uh, boy, time's just gone. Turn with me uh, to Ephesians chapter 5. We need to remind ourselves that God is first. It's about reminding ourselves that God is in charge of this life. It's about reminding ourselves that God is the creator. We are the created. Sometimes we get that turned around and we want to be in charge of this and that when actually God's in charge of this and that. Ephesians chapter 5, start with verse number 1. Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become as saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking, nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. We have an obligation one to another. Let it not be said that we let anger and disappointment get so rooted in our heart that we cannot be thankful for our brothers and sisters that we are laboring with. There are so many of you that have said such a kind word to me since I've been here these last few years. And I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the kind words. I thank you for your acceptance. I thank you for allowing me to come in here and be myself. And allowing me to heal wounds. And allowing me to grow. And allowing me to be used of God. 
and allowing me to explore these new avenues and, and new possibilities. And I'm telling you, we are thankful. And you have an opportunity. You're coming in now. Now you're getting your feet on the ground. And now you're getting word in your in your understanding. And you're beginning to understand the words of God and the things of God. And you're getting a hunger and you're thirsty. Don't lose that. Build on it. It's these foundations. It's these little things that we need to add to. And while we're at it, one of the basic elements of this foundation that we need to have if we're going to be successful and if we're going to be right is we have to be thankful. In all things. In all things. Give thanks. How many are thankful today? I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here. I'm thankful for the opportunity for the health that I have. Is it perfect? No. I went to the doctor just on Friday to deal with, apparently I have some pinched nerve. My sciatic nerve is all messed up. It's giving me fits and making my right leg do weird things. You know, got the twitchies and the, you know, there's the burning pins and the needles. And so, could it be better? Sure. Am I thankful? You better believe I'm thankful. Yeah. I'm thankful that I'm still able to go to work. I'm still able to provide for my family. I still have a love for my wife. I still have a love for the truth. Amen. I still have a love for my family. I still have a love for, for those that I come in contact with and I want to see good, not harm or evil. I can't tell you one person that I really dislike. I mean, there's those that I prefer not to be around. And the reason I prefer not to be around them is because they always want to point out fault or failure and always want to put their digs in. That doesn't mean I hate them. I'm still thankful that they're in my life because of what they mean to my family, what they mean to my kids, what they mean to my wife, what they provided for our family, what they've done. And I'm thankful for that. And I wish and I hope that someday I can get to a level where I can get to a place where one, that either doesn't bother me, or two, I can be more of the person that they need me to be in their life. So maybe that will stop me. I'm trying to figure out a way, earnestly praying, trying to seek out. How can I be a better man? How can I be the person that steps up? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking that because I want to be a better man. And I want you guys to be better people. And I think we never quite all the way get there. There's always, God's still working on me. I was talking with Brother Dave uh, before service today, right? And, and we were talking about how, how you know, he, he said, you got, you, you got it all together. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't have anything together. Oh, God's still working on me. I still have my faults. I still have my failures. I still have my times of, of unbelief and my times of why is this and why is that. Yeah. What I need to learn is I need to learn to be thankful. Right. God put me here for a reason. Let me make the best of this season and let me move forward and let me help somebody along the way. Amen. Amen? Amen. Children are out. Let's go ahead and stand. I want to be thankful. I want to be thankful for knowing who Jesus is, Amen. for knowing the friends that I have here at this church, for the, for the family that I have that I'm in love with. Amen. I have so much to be thankful for. And in your situation and where you're at right now, if you truly seek out God's will in your life, you can begin to say, I need to be thankful. Is everything going right? Probably not. Is there situations that you wish you could erase or wish you could undo or wish that they would be gone and forever behind you? Sure, we all do. But where you're at right now, in all things, give thanks. Yes, sir. We need to give thanks with where we are right here, right now. And once we can master that, because it's taught, it's learned, it's something that we have to teach ourselves and accustom ourselves. Once we can learn that, we get that under our belt, to be thankful in all things, then we can let God use us the way He needs to use us.
Jesus. Amen. We have a few minutes. I know the children are out. We have a few minutes. Go ahead and shake hands. Be friendly. Uh, get ready to serve God. Amen. And get ready to.